What's up? It's me, Gabby from tmblog.com, and you are watching another book review. I almost said tea review because it's been a while since I've done a book review, and I'm sipping this delicious raspberry leaf tea. It's supposed to it's supposed to be really good for like feminine health, and I've been doing some research on it. So I haven't shared it on TM Blog yet, but as soon as I get through with my research, I'll share it. So just letting you know what's in my cup. Now the book that I'm reviewing today, let me hold it up here, is called In the Company of Women by Grace Bonney. Here's the book right here, In the Company of Women by Grace Bonney. It's pretty much an inspirational and advice book from over 100 makers, artists, and entrepreneurs. So what Grace Bonney did is she pretty much interviewed all of these fantastic entrepreneur women who are entrepreneurs of creative businesses. and um, she you know, pretty much gave them the same type of questions. Some of them differ, but most of the questions are the same. And all of them answered differently, of course, or uniquely to themselves. And it turned out to be so inspirational. Oh my goodness, guys. There's actually a cute story of how I even found this book and ended up buying this book and how good of timing it was. But I don't want to put it in this video because it's just... It's just going to be too long, so I'm going to put it below. If you're watching this directly from um, YouTube, you'll have to go over to TN Blog to view it. If you're watching this video from TN Blog, then all you have to do is scroll down. It's below. Matter of fact, I, f I really genuinely feel like the book fairy gave me this book, just like the tea fairy gave me this teacup. You can read about this story on uh, five favorite teaware that I can't live without. Learn about the tea fairy bringing me this this teacup or tea mug. So you know what I like to do, guys. I don't like to give you too much information about the books because I want you to enjoy the reading experience. Also, I don't want to do any spoilers. So I'm just going to read the summary of the book and then I'm going to share with you a couple of things that I really liked about the book and perhaps you will like too. And since this book was so inspirational for me, I'm going to share um, a, a couple of things that I actually changed in my life after reading this book. Okay? So you're ready? Alright. <laughs> okay, so let me read the summary of the book. The book says, Empowering Advice and Inspiration. Over 100 exceptional and influential women. Matter of fact, one of the women in this book is Issa Rae. You know, she's amazing. Okay. Um, she's on page, I think, 185, but it doesn't matter. She's in the book. Um, so over 100 exceptional and influential women describe how they embraced their creative spirit, overcame adversity, and sparked a global movement of entrepreneurship. Media titans and ceramicists, hoteliers and tattoo artists, comedians and architects. Taken together, these profiles paint a beautiful picture of what happens when we pursue our passions and dreams. I know, right? It just sounds inspiring just reading that summary, okay? And it is truly inspiring. So let me share with you a couple of things that I loved in this book. First of all, I loved the relativity, or is that a word in, in English? I think I'm pulling it from French, but whatever. What I'm trying to say is that I loved the likeness. For some reason, I don't know if it's because of my age, I just turned 30 recently in December. And I think it's because of my age, I've been craving likeness. Like, I've been craving things, or not really things, I've been craving people that are like me. You know, I'm, I, I love diversity. I love being around people who are different from me. Matter of fact, all of my friends growing up were different from me. My, my best friend in elementary school was Greek. And my friends in high school were African. Like, and my husband is African. He's from Cameroon, Africa. So I pretty much surround myself with people who just grew up very different, differently from me, who have different walks of life, right? And that's wonderful. I love it. It's made me a better person. It's made me a better, you know, woman. It's made me a better African American. Like, it's made me who I am better because I'm around people who are authentically themselves. At the same time, there's nothing quite like being around someone who understands you because perhaps they're culturally the same as you. They grew up thinking like you, being around you, having the same culture, watching the same TV shows, speaking the same language, and, and just having the same kind of very, very similar perspective of life, right? And I've been craving that so deeply. I come to realize at 30 years old, I 
don't really have that many, you know, besides my family, I don't have that many people around me who just completely understand my mind and understand where I come from, you know? And sometimes when you're around people who don't understand you, if they don't know you yet, then they can be also kind of judgmental. And who likes being judged, you know? So I've, I've just really been struggling with that, actually. So I've been in my feelings <laughs> lately, as you can tell. And this book kind of put a salve on this wound of not being around people who are like me. Because in this book, not only did I find individuals who looked like me, but they also think like me. And just even individuals, individual women who didn't look like me in this book, they still thought like me. Because there's a certain thought process of a creative person. People who are driven by creativity are very different people. They don't have the same desires in life. Things that are normal for other people, like a 9 to 5, aren't normal for them. And if you're not around people like that, then you can kind of feel like the really oddball out. But this book made me feel like, oh my goodness, I'm amongst my people. Like, I really felt like I was amongst my people reading this book. Um, so many things that I was like, yes, I think like that too. I've been thinking like this. So let me share a couple of those things with you. So... First of all, on page 185, they mentioned tea. And you know, anytime a book mentioned tea, we have to bring it up. Okay, we have to bring it up. On page 185, we find the ladies who basically have this cool tea ritual. Their names are, um, if I'm pronouncing it right, Hoppy or Hopi and Lily Stockman. Um, I think they're sisters. Yeah, I think they're sisters. And they're textile designers. In Los Angeles California and they said the most important ritual is India in India is chai which we knew that right before any meeting before a day of printing commences we sit down over chai and talk life family gossip politics okay they're my type of girls okay because I start my day with tea every day matter of fact I start my day middle of my day and end my day with tea like my tea my day is already you know my day is already filled with tea. Matter of fact, let me take a couple of my, a cup of sip of my tea. I'm just saying that made me want to sip a tea. <laughs> so I was like, yes, you know, just little things like that in the book. But of course, the business side of things also touched me. For example, on page 180 um, and 113, what I thought was very interesting is that the women, although they were really creative, they really understood also that in order to turn their creativity into a secular pursuit, then they had to know business. And on page 180 and page 113, um, all, the, all of these women who mentioned this also mentioned the importance of business courses, of business education. And that's something that I've actually changed in my life. So I'll tell you about that here in a little bit. Um, on page 211, this interviewee, she talks about how, one of the questions is here, let me just go to the question so I can give you her name. Her name is Carrie Brownstein, and the question is, in moments of self-doubt or adversity, how do you build yourself back up? I completely related to her response. She said, cry. It's like a reset button, and it's so true. I cry all the time. I probably cry more than I should, okay, because like I'm always crying. I feel like it's a reset button. Like. You're, you're unsure of things, you're confused, or maybe you're just doubting yourself. Just sit in a corner and cry. Just let it out. Just cry. Just... <laughs> Not, no, don't laugh while you're crying. Just completely cry. And see if you don't feel rejuvenated afterwards. I always do. Um, and let's see what else I have. I have my like, little notes written here. I have so many other points in this book that I took out of. But I didn't write them down, so they're kind of like floating around in my head, and I can't really pinpoint where they are exactly in the book. There's a book that a certain Clancy Miller, an interviewee in the book, wrote called Cooking Solo, which I thought was something I'd put on my Amazon to read list because, you know, like most recipe books, like it says serves eight, serves five, serves twelve, and it's like, who's cooking for twelve people? You know, like normally I'm cooking for two. If, if to, because sometimes my husband doesn't even eat dinner because he's like on a diet and he tries to like do a smoothie for, for, for lunch and then like have like just like some granola for dinner. So he's like always on a diet. Sometimes I'm literally just cooking for one. So I thought that was a good book. So there, there's book suggestions in this book too. 
But the book is meant to inspire creative minds um, to and creative entrepreneurs, basically, and to inspire those individuals like me who are just now starting out but just need that extra push and the extra understanding. So, two things that I took away from this book that basically changed my life is that I've come to realize that um, I am so like just overflowing with creativity I can turn nothing into something like none other like I'm a very creative person I've known that forever right but I'm not business savvy like I do not have business sav savvy and I just really needed to recognize that you know Gabby your creativity is not going to um, you know circumvent the fact that you are ignorant when it comes to business management and business in general so how about this you focus on your creativity but also focus on business because that's what's going to help you turn your creativity into a secular pursuit you cannot do it otherwise and so that's one thing i took away from this book and i actually started some business courses that i have been taking now and will be taking until almost the end of this year um so yeah that this book encouraged me to basically get further education when it comes to business guys real stuff okay another thing this book encouraged me to do is not be so hard on myself when it comes to my creativity for a long time i didn't know exactly what i wanted to do and to be honest with you tea and blog is what i'm doing but is it what i'm supposed to do i don't know i don't think I, there's one specific thing that i'm supposed to do because i am a creative person creative people just create we're constantly creating so I don't think there's one specific thing that I have to say yes this is my goal in life you know there's some women who knew what they ex exactly wanted to do where there's other women who didn't know and they do multiple things because they're just creative all around and so that's what I have come to realize that I don't have to just stick to just one thing I can you know kind of play around with things and whatever works let it work you know whatever I, I enjoy let it let it work there are so many other things that i took from this book guys but if i continue to talk this tea review would go on or this is not a tea review this book review would go on and on and on and on and on so i'm going to leave it there if you read this book guys let me know what you thought of it below i'm so interested and if you're looking forward to reading this book let me know what you're looking forward to reading about it but that's my review of in the company of women by grace bonnie great book will be on my bookshelf with pride make sure guys that if you liked this video like the video just go ahead and hit that like button so that other people can see the video and of course like it too please follow at tn blog on twitter instagram and like tn blog facebook page because it gets really lonely without your likes guys make sure you subscribe directly to tnblog.com you can subscribe to this youtube channel but describing direct subscribing directly to tnblog.com will get you automatically entered to win free tea books stuff that i'm always giving away here on tnblog.com if you would like to support tnblog you can do so by hitting the support button on youtube or by hitting the donate button on tnblog.com whatever you donate whatever you give will be greatly appreciated and put towards sipping happily ever after and well guys that's tea end until next time may you continue to sit and read happily ever after